nationalism is gaining, globalism, etc., etc. In reality, I do not believe that, because in fact, when you look at uh, the history of both and compare that to what are the existing perceptions of that, you will feel that people usually think that states, nations, is so, are something primordial. It has existed always or at least very, very long time. While globalism is something which was brought by Hayek after the war and um, Montpellerin uh, group and imposed on the societies. In reality, it's totally vice versa. Globalization has existed roughly from the 15th century, from the time of the great discoveries, which united the world, united the globe, and people started to share goods, you know, uh, themselves, people, diseases, everything. Uh, states, came, like we know them, came into being after Westphalian peace in 1648, and uh, nations were created or constructed, as uh, brilliantly described in uh, the book of uh, uh, Benedict Anderson, somewhere in the 80s, and it is called Imagined Society. And in, indeed, it was a construct, political construct at that time, which exists and has been existing ever since. Why then we're looking so attentively on all the elections that took place recently in the United States, in Europe, in many places, practically everywhere, in China. Uh, Mumir, I know I have been apportioned 10 minutes for each of us. So, sorry, don't watch. Don't look at your watch. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, uh, the fact is that what is at stake? I would say that today the democratic values were at stake and that explains why we were watching on all these elections that attempted always. I'm saying that because if you look on the problems of democracy, the main uh, the main enemy today of democracy, I would say populism and not nationalism. And if you will even look at, uh, for instance, Brexit, you will see that Brexit was not against globalism. In fact, they wanted more globalism living European Union because they didn't want to be limited by the European Union, Union limitations and laws. And hedge funds located in London played a huge role in promoting this, uh, 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 promoting Brexit and uh, having it happen because it's also in their interest not to be bound by the uh, legislation of Europe. And uh, then I, I must say that, in fact, what we have, uh, which is covered by this so-called national sway, it is dissatisfaction with domestic situations in, in the majority of the countries. But unfortunately, these domestic situations are misinterpreted as well. Take, for instance, Russia. The, 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 the populist movement today is based on the idea that Russia was put by the West on the knees and now it is being raised from the knees. A lot of questions arise from that. Let's take another country, Poland. I'm sorry, when I look at what's happening now in Poland, this anti-Muslim uh, <coughs> situation with the refugees and everything, you know, we will not take, we will not dilute our culture, we will not dilute Sorry, and that is being pronounced in the country where is no Muslim population and no Muslim refugees. It is an imagined uh, uh, reason. Uh, let's take, uh, I don't know, UK. What do they say? We are against all these newcomers that are coming to UK and take our jobs, take our everything, you know, kindergarten places, uh, welfare, uh, 
etc. And who are newcomers? Those Poles that come to UK. And who is arguing that? The previous immigrants, the majority of whom are Muslim. Isn't it strange? That's what I'm saying, that today, uh, uh, and in UK it happens that, you know, Christian white immigration is being criticized by the people who migrated before and are not Christian and coming from different other different parts of the world. So when it happens everywhere, so I claim, my claim, that it is uh, uh, populism which presents the biggest threat to democracy, and we, if we want to find the answers to this problem which we are discussing today, we should focus on populism. Thank you.